karam kat 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 karam kat mom sa bok mom well what i wanted to explain is that not only is the G20 illegitimate, not only has it been elected by nobody to run the world, but it's doing a very bad job of running the world. It is not active on the major problems that we have in the world. It has allowed the takeover of the management of the world to, by capital. Instead of acting, it is only safeguarding the rights of finance, the rights of large corporations. It is governing on behalf of the financial sphere. And this means that capital is actually taking over directly the running of the world. And this became very clear when Davos this year, the three major people in Davos, published an article where they said in Foreign Policy, a very prestigious magazine, um, the G20 is not running the world properly. Uh, we know how to do this. We are going to make partnerships uh, with governments and we have 50 different committees who are all set to solve this problem, that problem, all of the world's problems. And, you know, we are, we're the ones who are going to do it. So the G20 is both inefficient, but also complicit in the takeover of the world's affairs by capital. Now, this means that the major problems with which we are confronted and which this forum is trying to attack are not being undertaken by anyone. In other words, climate change, because it gets in the way of the uh, energy industry, of the vehicle industry, and so on. They are not going to do anything about that, either in Davos or in the G20. Finance, which has started exactly as it was uh, five years ago, uh, business as usual, as we have all been saying this morning, uh, is not going to be attacked either, because that is the major arm. Davos doesn't want that and neither does the G20. So this leaves a huge responsibility on our shoulders, greater probably than any uh, group of humans has ever had before. If we can't deal with climate change, if we can't deal with getting finance off our backs, nobody else is going to do this for us. Uh, now, there is a contradiction here because uh, capital is investing heavily in alternative energies. They see a huge field for profit here. Uh, the last count I saw was that they have invested about $1.6 trillion since 2007 because they see this as a field where uh, you can make even more money than you could with the internet bubble. But they will just create another bubble. And this is not what the world needs. We do not need another takeover of a, of a major sector by a very few private actors. What we need is government investment. We need popular cooperation. We need bonds that are issued so that we can make major investments all over the world. We need to rescind the rules of the WTO so that we can transfer technology to the southern countries so they don't have to pay for 20 years to use, to use alternative technology. There's a million things that are on the agenda but which will not be undertaken either by capital or by the G20. So this responsibility with the social movements uh, says one thing to me, and that, that one word, if you like, is alliances. We have to make alliances. We have to become stronger. We have to become able to work together on these major issues and be in a position of strength to confront the the very strong adversaries, Davos and the G20, that we find uh, before us. So this is a task that has never been uh, required before. Uh, it's urgent. 
uh, I think it's doable, but we have to take this very, very seriously. Uh, and in the coming months, we will see if we're able to do this uh, or not. But the time is now. It's not next year. It's not the year after that. It's now. The future in our hands for good or for bad, for good or for ill, but it's up to us because if we don't do it, nobody else will.